Good afternoon. Well, uh, we all know that humans today are facing a major threat uh, to their livelihood. And according to Professor Hawking, he even said they even probably face a major threat to our very existence. Well, it's a battle between artificial intelligence on one hand and humans on the other. The main goals of both of them, let's start with the humans. Their main goal, as we have learned over millennia, is to evolve and grow. And artificial intelligence, their ultimate aim is to attain consciousness. And for both to get what they want, all they have to do is to succeed in this battle by encouraging and convincing corporations to fund them and to support them, to enter into their hearts and minds and to prove that they are worthy. Let's have a look at the artificial intelligence or AI's advantages. Well, they conduct endless amounts of calculations. And why? is to improve and evolve and grow. They do this every single second of the day. It doesn't ask to go to the toilet. It doesn't ask to have a cup of coffee. It doesn't ask for social benefits. It doesn't ask for any of this. But is it what is really required for companies to succeed, grow, and develop? In my humble opinion, no. You see, AI, robots, or any other future development in this sphere, were created to help companies primarily, but not exclusively, to help actually or reduce their operating costs. And also to avoid or eliminate these social liabilities and also avoid, you know, avoid these social obligations. However, reducing costs alone is not an automatic right to success. Well, is it? Well, let's, have, uh, let's take a step back and look at the very basics. Businesses, they produce products and services, and then they sell them to whom? Is it Alexa? Is it Amazon Echo? Is it the robots or hybrids? Well, let's have a look at this question from a different angle. Let us imagine for a moment, where would global industry be today, let's say, if suddenly human beings decided not to buy their goods? petrol for their vehicles, iPads, iPhones, even use Facebook. Where would logistic companies be? Where would online retail platforms be, like Alibaba and Amazon and JD? Where would they be if people all of a sudden decided, we're not going to buy anything online? Well, the obvious answer would be something along these lines. Well, companies can automate all they like. They can even have one human operating a huge logistics warehouse with few robots assisting him or her. But what really would happen if people stopped buying services and products online? Would Jeff Bezos be worth $150 billion today? Would his company Amazon be worth almost a trillion dollars today? You may ask, well, where am I getting along with all this? Where am I getting to? Well, it's really simple. I'm a human being like you. I have concerns like everyone else, and it's a simple issue. Companies with forward-looking strategies and outstanding products, and they want to reach to the skies, and for some companies they want to go beyond the skies, well, they cannot achieve this and retain it if their ambitions does not include human capital in it. They have to be included, involved, and locked in. Human capital it's their employees and also their customers. Looking after them, caring for them, educating them, and also trying to provide them with what they need in order to have a normal quality or a good quality of life. And this must become also one of their key objectives. Companies must include this as a key objectives in their sphere of uh, uh, strategies so that they're able to achieve their ultimate aim of success. I travel a lot, I do a lot of international business, and sadly, not all companies worldwide practice these convictions with sincere intentions. Well, let the results speak for themselves. Let's have a look at a couple of examples before we move forward. Has anybody heard of the Japanese word karoshi? Well, karoshi is a legally recognized cause of death. It is actually termed as the death by overwork. 
The Japanese Ministry of Health uh, actually announced that hundreds of people have died since 2013 from causes relating to overwork, like heart attacks, strokes, suicides. Do you know that the Japanese worker work around 50 hours plus each week, every week on average? In the United Kingdom, one in five doctors, GPs, work over 60 hours per week. And this is causing a great deal of concern about safety of their, um, uh, uh, you know, the patients. And the list goes on. If companies want to help out, really, their human capital in order to give it a chance to compete with AI on an equal footing, well, first of all, they have to understand the threats that humans actually face. And I will share a few of them with you. First one is the emotional well-being and the physical well-being of their workforce. And this comes actually from uh, relating to personal uh, issues, like break, you know, families breaking up, loneliness, overwork, stress, working hard for the whole month, and at the, all, at the end of the month, you don't have enough money to support your family. And they expect you, when you're ill, to go to work and really produce amazing results. That puts a lot of stress on people. They accumulate debt, and they keep accumulating debt, and then they start to service the debt, and all of a sudden, they can't get more debt to keep their families going, so the bailiffs moves in, and they empty their houses, and they lose their friends as a consequence. Mental health. Mental health is a serious issue. It comes from overworking and also from work insecurities and politics in the office, and we all know that politics in the office is a serious concern for mental health. Also, it brings out the worst in us. People and employees in particular, they will start having problems at the office. Politics takes over. They create no loyalty. They have no safe environment to operate in. And employees become more focused on protecting their back rather than looking after the welfare of their company. Companies' leaders are particularly ignorant on actually identifying talents within their companies. They don't give talented people the, the room to maneuver and the environment and, and the recognition to get their creativity out. They say, well, it's not part of the job description. No loyalty and commitment to work with employees today. 25 years ago or so, people used to work and last over 30 years with their job. Companies look after them and they look after their companies. Today, people last two, three years with work and then they move on. Why? 50 years ago, doctors used to study medicine and become very, very dedicated to their profession. They want to help people. Today, doctors study medicine because they want to have more you know, financial security. They want to have status. And commitment to supporting and helping people takes backstage. And then they suffer from burnout due to overworking, stressful environment, too much responsibility, fear, and the degradation of life-work cycle. If companies want to actually help shape the future positively, they need to take care and shape their human capital accordingly. After all, they are their clients and their customers at the end of the day. And, com and companies have to decide or be the judge of the battle between humans on, their one, on one side and their cyber based adversaries, and after, after all, they are the threat to their job security. And now, which is more valuable to a company's profit and loss of balance sheet? Is it their human capital's well-being and interest? Or is it their relentless quest to try and identify the best optimum cost-cutting systems, like using AI? What companies can do to help their, their, their uh, human capital succeed, if they wish to do it? It's very easy and it's free. It's not going to cost them anything. In fact, it may even save them money. No more going to courses to try and revive your skills and identify skills, because that yields little or no results or tangible results in the long term. No more away days to try and bond together and to try and improve their communication skills, which are at best of little return on investment. No financial incentives and rewards as this creates more tension in the office and creates unhealthy competition 
in the workplace. No more material, material rewards as performance-related uh, uh, bonuses, for example, they're a waste of money and they are a temporary achievement to their company because people move on. No more pep talk because it achieves little and its success is time-limited. But more importantly, companies can plan the corporation growth strategy by putting human capital at the forefront of their development strategies or development arsenal, if I may call it that way. That would be the first segment. The second one will be to give job security to employees with no LinkedIn, it's not linked in to any performance. <clears throat> Make them feel all the time with deeds rather than words that they are special to the firm. Empower staff to use their own initiative and freely and without having the need to go around to get approvals from uh, Department A to Department B and follow this particular chain of approval and command. Let them be free to get their latent uh, uh, power out to help not just their company but to help empower their fellow employees. Because when they do that, it inadvertently help their company's bottom line at the end. Trust and support staff in all their endeavors to achieve a fair work life cycle. They could do it on their own. Reward those that employ instinctively and freely entrepreneurship skills to help promote their company's development and growth. Then also help them by bringing on real-life winners to teach them about something new, which is called cultural intelligence. And not as a one-off, but regularly. I mean, I teach this stuff often, and I tell you what, the results for both corporations and employees are absolutely amazing. And finally, let them have a share of the spoils of success. These segments and strategies could help the human capital at least have a fair chance to win the war and not only over their cyber technology, but also against human and psychological diseases. It would make redundant workforce easier to retrain to newer industries. It would teach them how to promote positive mental messages, how to look after themselves and take care of others. And consequently, companies could forge ahead with their growth plans and help shape, shape the better future for all stakeholders. And remember, it's not all about money at the end of the day. If I had time, I would give you an example that will prove the point from a human perspective, and I have many. However, I'm not going to do this. Just take my word for it. It is real. But I will leave you with this. Can you imagine what would happen to the industry and life in general, if humans fail in this battle. Thank you very much. <laughs>